volume of a solid with unit cubes. Let's take a moment and talk about what a unit cube is. Like what is a unit cube? Well, there's a special type of rectangular prism called a cube. It's a rectangular prism where all the sides are the same, all the faces are the same. So if I take a look at a cube, a unit cube has a measurement of all one. So the length of a unit cube is one unit. The width of a unit cube is one unit. And the height of a unit cube is one unit. As a matter of fact, with a unit cube, all the sides are one unit. So even if I measure along the back, this measurement here would be one unit. No matter what side I measure, it measures one unit. And that's the definition of a unit cube. Let us consider something called the blocks problem. Morgan is helping his younger sister put away her alphabet blocks in a box. She already put away one layer of blocks. It takes 15 layers of blocks to make one layer. If the box is filled with four layers of blocks without any gaps, how many blocks will be in the box? What's important to note is that there are 15 blocks to make one layer. In other words, there's 15 blocks in the bottom of the box and the box can be filled with four layers of blocks. Our steps will look like this. We would use unit cubes to model a layer of blocks and we find that on the, along the bottom we would have a layer of blocks three by five. Three across, five up back. So it'd be three by five makes 15 blocks. Then we would make four layers of blocks. So how many total blocks did you use to make the model? There would be a total of 60 blocks. Did you notice that the total number of blocks can be found by multiplying the initial 15 blocks in the first layer times the number of layers, or even if you broke it down further, if you went three times five times four, that would also equal 60. So the total number of blocks is the product of one layer times the number of layers. The total number of blocks used is referred to as the volume of the box. This box is called a three-dimensional or 3D figure or a three-dimensional 3D solid is another way to refer to it. A three-dimensional figure has a length, width, and a height. So we refer to the length going across, the width goes back, and the height is the measurement going up. A 3D figure also has a base. The rectangle on the bottom here is referred to as the base of this prism. I want to point out that the base has a measurement of a length and a width. A former definition of volume is the amount of space occupied by or inside a three-dimensional figure. The number of cubic units needed to fill a three-dimensional figure by layering. So if you can picture, you have unit cubes that you're going to fill the bottom of the box with and then layer those unit cubes up until you reach the top of the box. As far as labeling goes, there's two ways you can label volume. One is with using the word units, and units can refer to any type of measurement. So if you're using the metric system, it would be meters, centimeters. If you're using the uh, American system, it would be feet, yards, whatever unit you're using for length. Units would go here with this little three raised up. That's called an exponent, and that would be read as units cubed, or another way to say it would be cubic units. Use unit cubes to build a model of the prism shown. Fill in the first row of the table below. So here we have a set of unit cubes, and across the front, we'll refer to that as the length, we see that we have three unit cubes, one, two, and three. The width is the part going back, and we look and we see so we have two cubes going back. How many layers are going up? Well, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So there are five layers, so when we complete this table, it's going to look like this. Three for the length, two for the width, and five for the height. Now, we're going to use unit cubes to build four other rectangular prisms, and we're going to fill in the length, the width, and the height with the number of cubes in the table. For example, I may choose to build a model which has four unit cubes on the bottom 
going across, and the width would be 3, so I'd have 12 unit cubes on the bottom with 5 layers for a total of 60 unit cubes. Another option would look like this. I may choose to build a square in the base with uh, four, four total unit cubes, two across and two back, and then add three layers to it. Two times two times three is equal to 12. What are some other ones that you can think of on your own? This screen may look slightly different than the one you're viewing on the presentation. That's because I have these shades covering up numbers here. You would just have a plain white background. Work with a partner and build as many right rectangular prisms that you can with 24 cubes. Record the dimensions in the table below. So this would be a good time for, for you to pause the video and using cubes or using any method you want, come up with different combinations that you can arrange 24 cubes to build a rectangular prism. Pause the video now and then after you complete it, restart it to see the answers. Hey, I trust that you had done the work yourself. Now it's time to reveal some possible answers. These aren't the only answers, but these are possible answers. So you could have a length of one, a width of one, and a height of 24. And notice that the product, one times one times 24 equals 24. Another option is that you could have a length of one, so you have one cube on the bottom, one, uh, two cubes going back, and then a stack would be 12 layers high. Again, if you multiply one times two times 12, that's gonna give you 24. Another option is you can still have one cube on the bottom and go back three, so you got a width of three, and then stack it so that you have eight layers okay, of a one by three rectangle, have eight layers. If you multiply one by three by eight, that still gives you 24. Yet another option would be if I have one cube going across, I go back four, uh, four cubes and stack it so that I have six layers. That also is another way to arrange 24 cubes so that I have a rectangular prism. If I multiply one times four times six, that also gives me 24. You can also go two cubes across, so you have a length of two, go back three, and have a layer of four, so four layers up, and that would be 24 cubes. And if you multiply two times three times four, that also equals 24. Here's the last option I have. And again, this is not the only options. There are other ways you can arrange it. I'm just showing you the possible ones I have. I can go two cubes across, two cubes back, and make a total of six layers. And that would be a rectangular prism a two by two by six rectangular prism. And if I multiply two times two times six, that equals 24. So far, we have found the volume of right rectangular prisms by counting unit cubes. You can also find the area by thinking of layering unit cubes. Think of the base as the bottom layer. If you know the area of the base, and we do know the area of the base for this particular prism, the length is five units, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and the width is two units, one and two. We go ahead, we can calculate the area, five times two is 10, so we got that. And that it is two layers high, so we got two layers high. Then we know the volume is the area of the base times the height. So in mathematical terms, capital B represents the area of the base and then H represents the height. We already calculated the area of the base is 10. That's right here. Okay, so the area of the base, capital B, is 10. We know the height is 2. Okay, here's the height. The height is 2. So we find out that the volume is 2 times 10. I said that backwards, 10 times 2, or 20 cubic units.